in the bottom of the chassis is the sample and hold amplifier board and this is the simplest board in the machine it consists of eight op amps precision op amps sample and hold capacitors and analog multiplexers first components to replace are the two electrolytic capacitors again it's held in place with the four screws Okay, I'm going to desolder them now. The original capacitors are 47 microfarad at 16 volt, but the replacements I'm using are going to be 220 microfarad at 35 volts. Extra capacitance will ensure greater stability for these sample and hold amplifiers. Capacitor polarity is clearly marked, positive lead which is the longer lead goes to the plus indicator on the board and repeat for the other capacitor then those two will be soldered in Next will be to replace all the polyester mylar film capacitors, the yellow ones, which are 0 0.01. There's 16 of them, so I'm going to replace those with polypropenes. There, to your left are the old mylar capacitors. To the right are the new polypropylene, 5% tolerance. Now with all the capacitors in place, flip the board over and solder. I'm just soldering one terminal of each capacitor right now. So I can flip them over and make them beautiful. Work of art. Go ahead and I'm going to finish soldering them in the other terminal. Next, I'll replace the 0.22 capacitors with a with a new 2% polypropylene. To the left are the older capacitors, and to the right, the gray boxy ones are the polypropylene. They're precision 2% and optimized for sample and hold circuits. Okay, with all the sample and hold capacitors in place, and flip it over and solder. Again, I want to solder one side. Perfect. I'll go ahead and solder the last remaining terminal for each capacitor. Okay, last one is to nab this ceramic disc and get him off there. And we'll put another polystyrene in its place. Okay, out with the old and with the new. All that remains are to remove the four 4011 analog switches and we'll install sockets and new chips.
installing new sockets. Pin one is to the lower left. And again, these are sockets with the integrated decoupling capacitor. Uh, turn those over and solder those. Go ahead and insert the ICs. Notch of the IC lines up with the notch on the socket. Just like that. Insert the rest of them. Finally, we're going to replace these trimmer resistors with precision multi turn units. These keyboards are notorious for the slightest bump or jar for going out of tune or changing some other parameter. And the new trimmers that we're going to be putting in will make these machines solid. Begin by unsoldering the first trimmer. I'm going to remove one at a time because we need to calibrate the replacement trimmer at the proper setting. Unsolder the first trimmer. At the top is the original one turn trimmer potentiometer and the device below the the blue one is a 25 turn precision potentiometer. Potentiometer has no backlash or slop so it will not change adjustments from shock or vibration. Before we install the new trimmer potentiometers we need to set them to the values of their former replacement parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the resistance across this lower left pin and the top pin and you'll see that the pins on the other on the new replacement are configured in the same we're going to adjust this until we get the exact same resistance on those same two terminals. You don't need to worry about the third remaining terminal, it's just that you've set it to at least two. With my test leads attached to the top pin and the lower left pin, when looking at the potentiometer from the bottom, I have a resistance of 2.687 kilo ohms. With the new replacement potentiometer, Connected in the same method, the top pin and the lower left pin when viewed from the bottom. I get about 4.5 because from the factory these are set roughly about midpoint. Okay, using a small slotted head screwdriver, you will adjust the new potentiometer to read the exact value that the original one had. So we want to read 2.687 kilo ohms. And right now we're at 4.56 kilo ohms. About as good as you're going to get right there. Okay, with the pre calibrated potentiometer, go ahead and install. Okay, then turn the board over and solder. Okay, one trimmer installed. Repeat with the remaining seven making sure that you calibrate each replacement. Here we have the board with all new trimmer pots installed. The cheap ones are gone. Now we have some nice instrumentation quality pots for a nice stable sample and hold board. Install the board back into the base of the synthesizer. Anytime you work on one of these boards after you've got everything back installed, check all these wires just to make sure nothing is detached from the board because it could be a real nightmare to try to try to find a fault if it's something is you know one of these wires came apart. And there you have it. One happy sample hole board. Thank you.